Greetings. Welcome to Introduction to SQL for Excel Users, Part 6, More Feature Engineering. I am your instructor, Dave Langer. So I'd like to start these tutorial videos with some housekeeping items. First up, how do you get the software and database that you need to complete the tutorial? So this video here is what you need if you're using a Windows laptop or a Windows desktop machine. This video shows you how to download all the software, download the database, get it all installed on your machine for free. Now, if you're using a Mac, or for some reason you prefer to use the cloud, this is the video for you. This video shows you how to get set up with everything that you need in Microsoft Azure, which is Microsoft's cloud solution. This tutorial series also comes with a GitHub, and it's available at github.com forward slash davondata forward slash SQL for Excel users. This GitHub will have all of the files for both the blog series as well as the YouTube tutorial series. And the link to this GitHub will be listed in each video description. Here I am in the Excel file that corresponds to part six of this series. And what you can see here is a table representative of the last video, part five in the series, where we added the all operators column here, which was a quite silly feature to engineer, but it was a useful exercise to illustrate some of the points I wanted to make in that video. Now, what we're going to do now is actually engineer a feature that's more realistic. In part five, I mentioned how ratios are extremely important. So what we're going to do is create a new feature called average calls per operator. So I'll just type this in, average calls per operator, hit enter. And Excel says, cool, Dave, you want to create a new table on this column? Awesome. Now notice it's blank. So what we'll need to do is put in a formula to tell Excel to go ahead and autofill this column with data. So what we want to do is we want to take the number of calls, so H2, divided by the number of operators that were on the floor at the time. So that's in O2. So we'll just go ahead and divide that by O2. And if we hit Enter, Excel says, awesome, I'll go ahead and do the calculations for you. Now, we need to take a step back here and talk a little bit about mathematics. Don't freak out. It's going to be exceedingly simple. Trust me. Okay. Behind the scenes, Excel's doing a lot for you automatically that you may not be aware of. And the reason for this is simple. Excel loves you. Excel loves you and wants you to have a good time analyzing data. So it does a lot of things for you automatically. It does a lot of things for you behind the scenes. This is a prime example. If you're not familiar with the way computers do mathematics, the way they do addition, division, subtraction, that sort of thing, you might take this all for granted. However, when you move into the world of SQL programming, you have to be a bit more in tune with how the computer actually does things. And the first thing that you need to know is that deep down inside the computer, it has two primary ways of representing numbers, okay? So numbers like this, 10, 2, 389, notice what these all have in common. They don't have a decimal point, right? It's not 389.5, it's just 389. That's a particular style of number known as an integer. And integers have no partial components. They have no decimal point. They have no fractional aspect. There's no 0.5, no 0.25, no 0.33. Integers are represented one way deep down inside of the computer. Now, the other high-level type of data is what's known as decimals. And by the way, I, I'm glossing over a bunch of details, and that's okay for our purposes. So if you're a com trained computer scientist and you're having a fit right now, <laughs> I apologize. So this is a decimal number. Because notice it's got a decimal point. It has a fractional part to it. Now, as you might imagine, computers were designed to be optimized, to com do computations as fast as they possibly can. And as it turns out, if you handle integers one way and decimals another, you can actually optimize how the computer does mathematics. So what ends up happening is, is that computers by default work faster if you're, for example, dividing two integers like this, than if you're dividing and working with decimals. So they tend to have what is known as integer arithmetic. So addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division for numbers that are whole, they have no fractional part. And then there's what also is known as 
floating point. And that's, be, just think of this as the decimal point means floating point. And then there's floating point arithmetic. And they're different. They're actually separate. Now, what Excel does is Excel is smart and it says, look, Dave's dividing two integers. He probably wants the fractional result. So what it does behind the scenes is it actually converts these from integer arithmetic to floating point or decimal arithmetic and gives you a decimal value because 99% of the time, or maybe even more in Excel land, you want this, this right here. You don't want to stick with integer arithmetic because if you have, you know, uh, seven divided by, or excuse me, 405 divided by seven here, which is what this, this cell is calculating, you're not going to necessarily get, oh, excuse me, <laughs> 405 divided by nine. This returns you back a whole number. But what happens when you divide um, 389 by 12 is you get back a fractional part. And if you stay in integer arithmetic land, what you would get back is just 32. Because in integer arithmetic, this part of the number does not exist. So we need to keep that in mind. Now, once again, as we talked about earlier in the series, all of these cells have a format, a data format, a data type. Sometimes they matter and sometimes they don't because Excel will do a lot of things for you. But when you move over into SQL land, as we'll see here in a second, you have to be cognizant of what is the underlying data format? What is the underlying data type? So let's switch over to SQL and let me demonstrate for you what I mean when I talk about integer arithmetic versus floating point or decimal arithmetic. Okay, here we are in SQL Server land and I've got the query that we ended up with at the end of part five of the tutorial series. And I can just highlight this and execute it. And we get back the data that we saw in Excel before I added the average calls per operator feature. So we can run it and everything looks great. Now, adding this new feature is quite easy. You can see here, what I'm doing is some mathematics. So first of all, I say, okay, take the level one operators, please add them to the level two operators. I've wrapped these in parentheses. So this thing's treated as a logical unit. And the reason why this is important is because of this thing right here. This means division. You're familiar with this from Excel, I'm sure. This means divide. Now, the problem is, is that there's these things called the order of precedence of mathematical operations in SQL. And this is true in other programming languages as well. And I've mentioned this before, and I'll mention this again. It's always best when in doubt to wrap these things, wrap whatever math you're doing in parentheses. And what this says is, hey, before you do the division SQL, Make sure you add these th two things together, because if I leave, if I leave these parentheses off, and I'll show you what this does in a second, you're going to get a different result. But what this says is add these two things up, and this is the denominator, and divide the total number of calls by the total number of operators. And you can also see here, this right here kind of defines what all operators is. I just basically copied it down here and slapped some parentheses around it. Now here's the thing: if I run this. Notice what you see. Where's the fractional component? Now we know that 405 divided by nine isn't even 45, so that's all good. But notice, as I said earlier in Excel land, 389 divided by 12 is actually not exactly 32. Notice that we're missing fractional component, and that's integer arithmetic in action. What's going on here is that SQL says, look, you're trying to do integer arithmetic, and here's how you would know this. So if we pop over to the database and we actually open up the tables and we take a look at fact call center here and we open up the columns, we can see here that first and foremost calls is an integer type. Now remember, I said, er I said earlier that data formatting, data typing matters a lot more in SQL than it does in Excel. And this is a prime example of it. Excel is more than happy to take two integers, divide them, and then say, they probably wants floating point slash decimal arithmetic. So I'll automatically do the conversion for him and spit out the result. SQL makes no assumptions about what you want. Once again, when you're in SQL world, you have to be explicit. And what you see here is calls is an integer. Level one operators is a small integer. Level two operators is a small integer. All three of these columns are integers. 
So when SQL takes a look at this piece of the select list, when you're engineering a feature, it says, okay, Dave wants to take the calls, which is an integer, and divide it by the sum of two integers. All of these numbers are integers, so I can stay in integer arithmetic land, which means you get no fractional part. You don't get the decimal point. And that's not what you want. You need some way to tell SQL, hey, I know all three of these columns are integers, but I want the fractional part. You have to find some way to cue SQL in that you actually are taking a bunch of integers, three of them in fact right now, and but you actually want decimal or floating point arithmetic done with the columns. So you need some way to clue SQL in on that. But before we go there, I just want to show you this order of precedence thing again. So notice if I do this, if I take off the parentheses and I run it, whoa, I get all kinds of funkiness, right? I get all kinds of funkiness. What this is saying is that Whoa, divide by zero. So at some point, at some point, the level one operators was zero. But what's really going on behind the scenes is the, what's going on in terms of the order of precedence is the calls are first divided by level one operators. And then whatever this number is, you then add level two operators on it. And if any one of the rows in the database table has zero for the level one operator, you're going to get this error. You're going to get this error. And let's go ahead and take a look at this table real quick. We can just scroll down. And sure enough, look at that. Here is a record where level one operators is zero. And if you're not familiar with mathematics, or maybe if you forgot this from school, dividing by zero is undefined, which is why you get this error, divide by zero error encounter. The computer goes, I don't know what the hell you're doing here, so I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to throw an error. And that's because the level uh, excuse me, the order of precedence in mathematics says that the way this code is written, you do the division first and then add this to the other one, add this to the result of the division. So you definitely need this. And then everything's hunky-dory because there's never no operators on duty, right? The, the summation of level one plus level two operators is always greater than zero. So that's why this code works. So here you have it. Cool. I understand, Dave, why I need the parentheses. I understand that I'm working with mathematics with three different integers. You know, the calls, the level two operators, the level one operators are all different types of integers. So SQL is explicit and it says, OK, I'm going to keep you in integer arithmetic land and not give you a fractional or a decimal portion in the results here. Well, how do we tell SQL that we don't want SQL to act this way? How do we tell SQL, no, 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 even though I'm using integers, please do decimal slash floating point arithmetic so that I get the fractional part over here. And how you do that, well, one way to do that, there are multiple ways to do it, but this is the easiest. And what you do is you just basically transform one of these, one of these values you transform into a decimal, into a number with a decimal point in it. And then what that does is that tells SQL, oh, okay, well, shoot, if you're doing decimal arithmetic for one of these things is decimal, then I will just do decimal arithmetic for everything. And the way you do that is by using what is known as cast. So I want to talk about this snippet of code right here. Cast. So cast is a computer science term. It's a programming term. To cast something is to essentially transform it. It's also known as casting. There's also a different keyword you can use in T-SQL that's not standard. So I'm using cast here because this is actually portable across different variations of SQL. So what cast does is says, look, SQL, I want you to take something and I want you to transform it. I want you to cast it into a different mold. Think of it that way. I want to cast something into a different mold. And in particular, what I want you to cast is the calls column, this column right here. I want you to cast this into a different form. Because right now, we know from the table schema, the table structure, the table's formatting, that calls is of type integer here. And we're saying, look, I don't want it to be that. I want you to transform that into something else, please. And in particular, I would like you to cast FCC calls 
as a decimal. I want you to take this integer column and I want you to transform it internally into a decimal format, something with a decimal point, a fractional component. And SQL says, okay, cool, great. How would you like me to set that up? And that's what this part does. This part here is a specification that says, okay, what size of a decimal would you like? What this tells SQL is, hey, when you're transforming calls into a decimal, I want you to make the decimals six total digits, first and foremost, where two of those digits are to the right of the decimal point. And what that means is that the net result is, is that you can have four digits to the left of the decimal point maximum and two digits to the right of the decimal point maximum. That's what this means. And SQL says, okay, cool. Casting is done first. So the cast is done before the division and it's done before the addition. So what this does is the first thing SQL does is it takes calls and it transforms it into a decimal with a maximum of four digits to the left of the decimal point and a maximum of two digits to the right of the decimal point. And what that means is this becomes 405.00, so on and so forth. First thing that happens. And then SQL says, okay, cool. I've done that. Oh, okay. Dave wants to do this because now these things are parenthetically contained, right? This operation is parenthetically contained. It says, okay, I'll do this addition next. I'll add level one operators to level two operators. And that'll produce a single integer digit, which is equal to this, the all operators, right? 9, 12, 14, 5, so on and so forth. And then lastly, it says, okay, I'm going to divide this decimal number by this integer. Oh, okay. Well, one of these numbers is a decimal, so that means I need to flip over into decimal floating point arithmetic. And that will give you the partial result that you're interested in. So if I just go ahead and run this, whammo blammo, you can see now I'm getting all of the fractional components that you saw in Excel. And I know this is a pain, but this is super important, right? I've said this multiple times throughout the series so far, and I will say it again before the end of the series, that one of the main differences between working in Excel and working in SQL is you have to be explicit. You have to explicitly tell SQL what you want. The vast majority of the time, the kinds of things that Excel does for you automagically behind the scenes to make your experience working with data easier do not happen in SQL or any other programming language for that matter. And you need to be explicit about it. And that's one of, this is one of those instances. You need to be explicit. If you want the fractional component of working with a bunch of integers where you're doing arithmetic, you need to transform at least one of them into a decimal. That's the simplest way to flip SQL over from integer arithmetic to decimal slash floating point arithmetic and get the results that you want. Now, one thing to mention, I picked this one out of a hat. It actually doesn't matter. I could have cast level one operators. I could have cast level two operators. So let's go ahead and just try that real quick. So for example, I could just do this real quick, just to demonstrate. And let's say I picked level one operators, for example. If I run this, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which of the integer values you pick to cast as a decimal, you just have to cast one of them. You don't have to cast all of them, so you don't need to type cast all over the place. Just one of them is sufficient to actually flip you over into decimal slash floating point arithmetic land. Okay, there you have it. One of the first examples of why data formatting matters in SQL, where it doesn't necessarily matter in Excel. I hope you're enjoying the series. I hope you're finding value in it. Until next time, stay healthy, and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.